What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I have some really good information to share with you guys today about Social Security. So we've been talking a lot about Social Security reform, the $200 raise for Social Security. You have politicians on both sides saying we should do this, we should do that. But how much does this really cost? And will it be effective, these different plans that they're throwing out? And so today... I found this this uh, tool that you can use, and we're gonna go in, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use this tool yourself, and you'll be able to see through these calculations what actually works. So if, it's, if we're raising the full retirement age, how much is that going to impact Social Security reform? If we're talking about the 250,000, raising the cap, how does that affect the Social Security reform? And so this is a really great tool, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'll, I'll post a link so you guys can go and check out this tool for yourself. It's kind of, um, it's set up kind of like in a PowerPoint format, so you will get information as well. So I think it's it's really, really valuable. So we're gonna take a look at that. But first off, you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. And then remember, follow me on Twitter, at the TEC Show Live, and I post videos over there, as well as tweets and retweets. So let's go ahead and get started. I just wanna show you, this now this is coming from the american academy of actuaries now so like i said i'll, I'll send you guys this link and it's just actuaries.org forward slash social security so once you get to this page and i'm going to skip through a lot of this okay but i want you to go through this and actually listen to the things that they they have to say because they're giving you a lot of information when it comes to the different plans that these politicians are talking about. So you're gonna take the challenge, click on that button there, and it will give you the, the welcomes uh, page here, and then they're gonna tell you a little bit about the program. Okay, and so I'm just gonna skip past this part, but they will play this video, and once the video's over, then you can get started. Okay, so here's the next screen here, and then read all the information on here, and then you can click next, and then you'll go to here, read this information here, click next. I just wanna get you guys to the last screen because that's where you do the calculations. And then you just click on here, let's go. Now they're going to take you into this, this town, okay, this mock town. And it's really interesting because you have all these different areas where you can click. And once you click on this, it will take you in and you'll you'll hear people talking about their experience when it comes to Social Security. So you're not just talking about people who are retired, but you're talking about people who are currently working uh, because everybody plays a role when it comes to Social Security. And when it comes to Social Security reform, we all play a role as well because you have people paying into it right now. You have people receiving benefits right now. You have survivors right now. And so you have a variety of different people that are involved. So click on all of these these links first, and then it'll take you into those. And then you go to the, the city hall. Once you click on that, then you're going to hear the different politicians here, and they're gonna be talking about the program. Like I said, you wanna click on each one so you hear kind of their different, the ways that they want to move forward when it comes to social security reform. Click on continue, and now this takes you to the calculation. Okay, now this is the, this is the important part. And so then you go ahead and click on here and they will allow you to do this on your own, which I think is great because now you can look at, okay, these are the different things that are out there. Do I want to make changes with these things? And if I do, how is that going to affect social security reform? Okay, right now it says shortfall eliminated. So over here you have zero, you need to get this to 100%. If you get it to 100%, that means that you're, you're short, there's no shortfall when it comes to the trust fund. Now we're only talking about the trust fund. If we wanna talk about a raise for social security, obviously you're going to need more money. So it needs to be more than 100%. But I just wanna kinda of go through this. And if you do this, you'll be able to kinda of see, okay, well, looks like we're gonna to have to raise a full retirement age as well as the, the, the cap, the 250,000 uh, cap 250 people making 250,000 or more are going to have to pay more in taxes or so we'll just go through this so the first uh, one here and i know it's i'm blocking a little bit of this but it's, it's just a cost of living adjustment so cola so if we were in a situation where we're looking at cola and we wanted to make changes to cola which i'm going to put no change on here but there are different things that you can do you can reduce the annual cola by 0 0.5 percent uh, percentage point so that's reducing which you really don't wanna do that because that means you're gonna get less. 
and and they they go into detail that's why you need to go through the different the different um listen to the different people that are talking on this on this uh game i'll call it a game you you want to listen to those people because they talk about some of these different things just to kind of get you so you understand we know about the cpi scores uh, we know about the CPI for the elderly. We've been talking about this. Right now they use the CPIW, but if they change it to the CPI uh, for the elderly, that would change things there. And so just go through this and you'll, you'll find you'll find uh, the, the information here. And then you kind of play around with it. I'm just doing a quick one here, but you can play around with this and find out, okay, well, it looks like these are the these are the major points that we should be focused on. Maybe not so much the cost of living adjustment, but we should be focusing on other things because they will be able to you'll be able to to bring in more money if you use those other the categories. You'll see what I'm saying here. So I hit submit here. I, I put no change, so it's not going to change anything on here. Now, normal retirement age. So raising the full retirement age. Now we've heard talk about this. We know politicians are talking about this right now. And so we see here increased by two months a year until it's age 68. So if you wanted to raise the full retirement age to 68, so you just raise it up one year, that's the one we'll click uh, for now. But they have other ones increase uh, by two months a year until it's uh, age 69, then increase one month every two years. So that would be a constant increase. So once it gets to 69, then it will every two years by every, you know, by a month every two years, which would be a long period. But still, what is that? Uh, by one month every two years, so that's 20, 24 years, it would go up another, I guess another, yeah, another year. So that would go up to 70. So that would be far out. It wouldn't be any, anything close. But uh, initially, it would raise to 69 relatively uh, quickly within a couple of years. Okay, so, and then they have the other ones here, increase it by the age of 62. So they're talking about the early, the early retirement age. So moving that up from 62 to, what do they want to move it up to? 62, the earliest eligibility by three months a year until it is age 69. Uh, so the high would be 69. So the full retirement age would be 69. The early retirement age, or if you want to call it that, the minimum, I think they changed the name to like the minimum retirement age would move from 62 to 64 uh, in 2030. So what we want to do, we're just going to put 68 and we'll see that. We'll submit that and we'll see what it shows here. Okay. So that would, that would be about 15% of where we need to be. We need to be at a hundred percent in order to eliminate the shortfall as a whole. So let's move on down here. Uh, family benefits, this one, I'm going to, I'm, I'm just gonna put no change. And like I said, go through here and you can do your own, but I just wanna kinda get to some of the things that we've been hearing a lot about. So we'll put no change for that one. Uh, let's see, increasing some benefits. Okay, so this is the increase that we were talking about, right? So this would be, and we'll say, I, I'm gonna use this one because we've heard, we've heard politicians uh, say this. And this one says, increase minimum benefits to 125% of poverty level indexed for those with 30 years of coverage. So we're, we're gonna use that one, but they have some other ones here. So allow five years. So if you, the, the five years, and like I said, if you listen to all the different, go through all the different uh, functions on here, they're gonna explain this in more detail when it comes to, let's say you wanted to take five years or instead of taking the, the highest 35 years, they're only gonna take the highest 30 because you're gonna get a five year grace period basically because let's say you have uh, people that you need to take care of. Uh, you, your, your, your parents get older and you're working, but you're gonna have to take some time off. Well, that hurts that 35 years of your, your highest salary. And so they wanna take that into consideration here. And then you could put both, but we're gonna just use this one here. So if you wanna see the increase, we'll cl hit click submit. Okay, so that would be about 5%. Okay, so that would take about 5% away. So before we had 15%, now we're back down to 10% because of that increase, okay? So let's uh, let's move here and see what this says. Okay, so reducing benefits for future retirees. So if we are in a situation where they said, okay, let's let's reduce benefits for people who are younger right now, people just starting out in their job. So we can say reduce benefits by 5% for all future retirees. 
you probably don't want to do that because that just means anyone who is retiring from this point on. So reduce benefits for higher earners, retirees starting in 2030. So reducing the benefits, and this has been talked about as well, reducing those benefits for people who are you know, making a lot of money already. And so that could be something that we could see. Now they're saying by 2030, and the whole reason there is because people who have more money probably don't need to rely on social security as much. And so this could be a reduction. So we'll go ahead and put that and we'll click submit. Okay, so that moves us up to 33%, okay? And so let's move on down here and see what this says. So changing the benefit formula. So I'm gonna put no change on this, but this is increasing, uh, increase by phasing in the number of years uh, used to calculate benefits from 35 to 40. So instead of taking the, the top 35 years, you can take the top 40 years. That just means you're working longer, basically. Uh, so we're gonna put no change on that one. Submit. Move down here. Okay, workers, payroll tax. So we've heard a lot about the payroll tax, right? And we talk a lot about this. And this is just the payroll tax overall. Okay, I think that's the way they have it situated here, yes. So raise immediately uh, from 12.4% to 16%. So right now, you pay 6.2%, your employer pays 6.2%, that gives you that total there of 12.4%. That's, that's what the current taxes are for anyone who is working and paying into that payroll tax. So what, what if we immediately raised it to 16%? which I'm going to do that just for, for this, this, um, this experiment here. So there are some other things here. You can raise it 0.1% a year starting in 2028 until it is 14.4%. So this would be a gradual increase there. So it's not gonna be anything that's right away. Uh, the one thing that they don't have on here is kind of a, um, the stabilizer where you don't raise it at all unless the economy starts to to suffer and then that's when it kicks in and that stabilizer would, 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 you would start being taxed a little bit more because the stabilizer would, would start playing a role. Uh, you can raise it by 0.1% a year starting in 2025 until it is 13%. So you can do that and then you can put no change. I'm gonna go with this one just to show you uh, the change here. So you click submit. Now you see that just that right there, just raising the payroll tax to 16% gets you to that 100% that you would need. And so you would, you'd get the 100% and, I mean, you get to the 100% of the shortfall, so you'd eliminate that, as well as you would have the increase in there. And you would have that increase, a $200, we'll, we'll say, $200 raise for Social Security. The reason why you would have that in there is because up here, that's what we, we adjusted it for. Uh, where is it? Increased benefits, so here. So increased benefits, 125% of the poverty level. So because we did that, that was 5%. That would have taken 5%, so that's a minus 5% there. But you see, raising the payroll tax is the most effective way to handle this right now. That gets you 103%. That alone, well, you don't have to do any of this other stuff that alone would get you to the 100% that you need. And you'd still have a little shortfall. What, what I'm saying basically, you would be really close, what is it, 90, let's see, 98%. And the way I'm calculating this is, if you wanted to have a $200 raise for Social Security, and you had the workers, uh, the, the payroll tax, you just raised that to 16%, that would pretty much get you there. You would need to do a little bit more you need what, what, two more percent? I'll, I'll show you that after, after we finish this. But just for sake of argument, because we know that raising the payroll tax would get you where you need to be, I'm gonna put no change on this. And then we're gonna go down and we're gonna look at the 200 and uh, raising it up 250,000 or more. And I think, let's see, is it on here? Yes. So uh, if we're looking at this now, this is where to eliminate the base uh, and provide no additional benefit credits. So we don't wanna look at all any of these. We wanna look at this because this is what we're hearing a lot about. We're hearing about apply tax on earnings above 250,000 and provide some benefit credits on those earnings. 
That's what we want to look at. So that's what you're hearing about. Bernie Sanders is talking about the the uh, raising the cap. And so let's go ahead and submit that one. That one also gets us over the mark, 103%, right? So that, that alone is 70%. So you put that with everything else here, you can provide the $200 raise. And we, when we were talking about the only other thing that you would really see, uh, it would be this here. So you would, you would still have to raise a full retirement age to 68. So you're only raising it one year. So that's, that's not, that shouldn't be too bad. And then what else do we have here? So reduce benefits on higher earners. So if you're reducing the benefits here, and so those are, those are the big things here. Reducing the benefits for people who are making more money, tax people making over 250,000, and then the full retirement age, raise it up to 68. Those are the major things that you would need to do in order to make this happen, okay? Now, this last one here, uh, getting additional revenue for social security. So if you want even more revenue, uh, let's see, include employer and employee premiums for, er, for employers, health insurance as covered taxable earnings. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Apply 6.2% tax on investments uh, and investment income as defined in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, so that's another way to do it. Now, I, I'm not gonna get into this. They don't really talk too much about this. I can't really see the 6.2% on investments uh, investment income, the, the, uh, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> Republicans will not let that happen. Uh, so that, that's not going to, and that, that will affect them as well. That'll affect a lot of politicians and they're not going to raise taxes on themselves. Uh, unfortunate, but that's, that's the way they think. Okay. So let, let's just go ahead and, and click no change on that one, submit it. So this is what we're looking at. 103%. That's if you're raising the cap, the 250,000, the cap, or if you want to do the other raising the payroll tax. I'm just showing you guys different options here. So no change. And you want to raise just the payroll tax for everyone, raise it up to 16% from 12.4% uh, to 16%. That'll get you, actually that gives you way over. And what else do we have here? There was one other thing. So if we did that, and then we did no change when it comes to the full retirement age. You can do that, you'll still be over, well over, so you have extra money. So you can ha actually have another trust fund uh, accruing money if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, and then I'm just looking for some other things. So you can even reduce the benefits here. You could put no change on this. So for people who are wealthy, you don't even have to reduce their, their benefits. You can put no change on that and submit. And now you're at 98%, so you're, you're pretty much there. So you can do all that with just raising that payroll tax, right? So it just, I mean, I just wanted to show you that, how just raising the payroll tax for everyone who is currently working, it, it pretty much gets you there. So that's, I mean, that should be a no brainer because what they're talking about right now, what we're hearing about, let's put no change on this. We're hearing about, we're hearing a lot of politicians out there just saying full retirement age, let, let's raise it up. Let's raise it to uh, pretty much to 70. Let's do that. That's, that's the fix. That only gets you 33%. You still need 77% more. So you can't just raise the full retirement age and let's just, for sake of argument, let's put no change on the, on the increased benefits. And so now you're at 38%. So if you do that one thing, the full retirement, so all these politicians out there that are talking about full retirement age, just raise the full retirement age and we'll be fine. That's not enough. You're going to need to do more. And I I've said this, I said this last week. I just, I said it in a, a couple of videos ago, you need to do more than just raising the full retirement age. So anytime you hear a politician saying that, say, what else are you going to do? because you need to do a lot more than just raising the full retirement age. And when it comes down to it, and what politicians, some politicians don't want to, they don't want to admit this because they're afraid to say this, you're going to need to raise taxes. That's bottom line. You don't have enough workers in the workforce right now in order to take care of the people who are receiving social security benefits right now. 
it, you just don't have it. So you have to raise taxes. They don't want to be the ones to say, yes, you have to raise taxes. And so, and that's, that's why when, and I, I think we, I think we have enough here. Hopefully you guys understand this. I will post a link on this. So you guys, I want you to check this out because this, this is really good for you to kind of go through and it'll give you that information that you need. So you can say, okay, yeah, the, there a lot more needs to be done. But when it comes to politicians, they don't want to make that call. They don't want to say, yeah, well, you know what? We have to raise taxes. And so that's why you have the, the senators, this nonpartisan group, they're working the numbers, they're looking at all this stuff and they're realizing, wow, we're, we need to raise taxes. That's our only real option out. You heard about the sovereign wealth fund, they wanna do that, but that's borrowing money. So that's borrowing taxpayers money to invest in the stock market. And then you're gonna have to wait for a period of time to see, hopefully you'll be able to, to earn some money with that, but that's no guarantee. And in 10 years, something needs to be done. So that's probably why Senator Cassidy, and the, he, you know, he's been the one that's pretty much talking a lot about the Sovereign Wealth Fund. That's the major reason why he wants to pull Biden into this. He wants to pull President Biden into this so President Biden can say, okay, yeah, we need to raise taxes. And then Senator Cassidy can step back and say, hey, I, you know, this is what President Biden wants to do. And so that's why we're doing it. That's the reason, because they don't really have a plan. They're not putting a plan forward, because in that plan, you better believe there's going to be a tax increase, either for the wealthy or a tax increase across the board. And so that's why they don't want to, to move on this. Even President Biden, he doesn't want to raise taxes on anyone making 400000 or less. And so that's another another thing that you have to look at. So in this experiment that we did, they didn't have 400000 or more. They had 250000 or more. So if it's 400000 or more, that's going to be less money coming in. So that would mean that you're going to have to do a number of things. You can't just do the people making 400000 or more. You're going to have to do that. You might have to raise a full retirement age up to, to 68 or maybe even 69. So things need to be done. There, there's, it's, there are going to be some tough choices that are, are going to need to happen. And hopefully, the hope is that they can go ahead and address this now and not wait until, I mean, it, because you're not going to see anything in 2024. I, I just don't see politicians moving forward with any major legislation during an election year. Uh, unless they really absolutely have to. And so looking at where we are when it comes to social security reform, this is the perfect time for them to actually move forward with something, some type of a bipartisan uh, proposal. And so we're gonna follow it, we're gonna see where it goes. The good news is you can still make this happen. You can still have an increase in there. And maybe that's something that the kind of the silver lining on this whole thing is if you are raising taxes on people, but you are putting forward a, a raise for social security, a $200 raise for social security, you're gonna make people happy even though they have to pay a little bit more in taxes. And you have to look at it this way. The way that this social security should be looked at, this is an investment, okay? And when I say it's an investment, you're investing in your future. So you're, you're paying a little bit more in taxes now, just like if you had a 401k, same thing. You're putting a little bit more in your 401k because when you get to the age where you retire, you'll have a little bit more when you retire. And so that's all this is, and that's the way they need to sell this. Look, we're gonna raise taxes now. Let's say they raise taxes across the board from 6.2% up to, to, or from the 12.4% up to the 16%. If they raise that across the board, both the employee and the employer are gonna have to pay a little bit more in taxes, but this is an investment for that employee. So when they retire, they'll have a little bit more. And that's why at the back end you say, we're offering the $200 raise, plus COLA is gonna stay the same, so it will increase every year. And so you have a little bit more money in your pocket when you retire. And so hopefully that will make it a little easier for people to take the fact that they're paying a little bit more in taxes. I wanna know what you guys think about this. And also I wanna know, I want you guys to do this experiment and let me know what your results are. If you, if you found some different loopholes or different ways uh, to make it work, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more. Happy Friday, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.